Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. In Season 4, we learned a few basic definitions for some real virtues. In this season, we'll be trying to pin down the real meanings of some things that people treat like virtues, which aren't always virtuous. In other words, fake virtues. Today's fake virtue is privacy. Now, it's not so much that privacy itself is considered virtuous as that respecting the privacy of others is considered virtuous. And this, I'm afraid, is not always true. When is it true? A few examples come to mind. For instance, you should respect a person's privacy in terms of not barging in on them when they're in the shower. I say this because this is also covered by the virtue of modesty. Also, people may sometimes go off by themselves to think, and it's okay for them to be in private like that. That should be respected. We know this because Jesus did the very same thing in Mark 1.35 and other places, and he wouldn't have done it if it was a bad thing. However, privacy means more than just modesty or time to think. It involves an aloneness as well, a solitary state where no one else breaks in on your life or, in extreme cases, even interacts with you. And this can lead to a number of dangers. First is the danger of interpreting privacy to mean total solitude. Now, there's nothing about solitude that's evil. In fact, it can even be a source of holiness. But, for the most part, human beings are social creatures, dependent on one another for their mutual survival. That's why so many of their human rights center around social interaction. The right to gather in groups, receive truthful information, etc. The real danger here is that people might think they can be totally alone and be wrong about that. Maybe they can only be partially alone, or only alone some of the time. If that's the case, they may start to think they don't have obligations to others anymore, because they're not around them very often, and that's utterly false. Secondly, there's the danger of taking privacy to mean exemption from justice. This is the way in which it's often used today. People insist on privacy when what they really mean is, let me do horrible things and get away with it. For example, say a mugger walks up to somebody in an alleyway and takes their wallet, then shoots them in the gut to keep them from talking to anybody about it. Why does he do this in an alleyway? Why wouldn't he do it in the middle of Main Street? Because he'd get caught and have to pay for what he did. Similarly, those who use privacy as an excuse for their actions these days are often merely trying to give cover to people who do evil but don't want to face the consequences of their evil deeds. The whole idea is really based around a false view of the world, probably something we thought up while sitting in cubicles. This privacy-based worldview sees the world as essentially a bunch of little bubbles with people inside them, and that while we're in our own bubble, nobody and nothing can get in from outside. But when we meet other people, we see inside one another's bubbles for a moment, and that's when we have to put on our disguises and pretend to be nice. That's absurd. That kind of radical independence only serves to distance people from one another and prevent them from working together or practicing any virtues towards each other. It's like covering every person in the world with a veil of darkness which only they can break and only when they want to. In other words, privacy in this sense might almost be thought of as the same thing as darkness or being totally in the dark about others. And you know what our blessed Lord said about darkness. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light, that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God. John 3, 19-21 that's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.